Welcome back to Newton's Laws of Motion, The Adventure of Tonathan. We're not going to be talking about Tonathan anymore, but we're going to be learning more about friction. Alright, feeling quite dashing, you slide a 0.05 kilogram salt shaker to the right of you, giving an initial speed of 1.15 meters per second. If the shaker comes to rest with constant acceleration in 0.84 meters, draw a free body diagram. What is acceleration? What is the force of friction? What is the coefficient of friction? Okay. So first drawing this free body diagram, um, I guess I'll just draw it here. So as we see, there's going to be a force of gravity, there's always force of gravity as long as you're on a planet. And um, there's going to be a normal force because it's, it's in contact with the ground. So force normal. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, there's going to be a force applied. However, there is no force applied in this situation. The reason there's no force applied in this situation is because the person throws the salt shaker and it starts moving. So it starts moving to the right and there's no force applied. There was a force applied uh, before he let go of it or she let go of it, but there was there is no force applied that's pushing it to the right as it's moving. It's let go, so there's no force applied while it's moving. Before it was thrown, there's a force applied, but not while it's moving. However, so it is going to come to a stop. So what we're going to do is there's going to be a force of friction. So finally, we're learning a little bit about friction. So that's what the free body diagram should look like. What is the acceleration? Okay, so let's write down everything we know. So, part B. We know that the initial velocity that this thing starts moving with is 1.15 meters per second. We know that it's going to be moving a displacement of 0.84 meters. And we also know that it's going to come to stop after 0.84 meters. So the final velocity is equal to zero. And what we're looking for is the acceleration. Now we're going to look at a formula and we're going to uh, look at which one has it. And it's going to be this one right here. Displacement is equal to initial velocity T. Oh, wait, wait. No, nope. actually not that formula. I'm gonna look at it, and what has all four of them is gonna be this one right here. Vf squared equals V initial squared plus 2a change in x. Vf is zero. 1.15 squared plus 2a change in x, 0.84. And we're gonna isolate to find what that acceleration is. Put that 1.15 squared to the other side and then divide by two and divide by 0.84 and we're gonna get zero, uh, we're gonna get negative 0 0.79 um, meters per second squared. So this is the acceleration that we find. Oh, I'm gonna box that. So as it's moving, the acceleration is slowing it down, because the friction is slowing it down with negative 0 0.79 meters per second squared. So now, what we're trying to find is what the force of friction is. So what we can see is the only thing slowing it down is this force of friction. So if we did sum of all forces in the x is equal to mass times acceleration, the only force in the x direction is this force of friction. And this is going to be equal to the mass, which is 0 0.05 times the acceleration, which we just found to be negative 0.79. So we do that times 0 0.05 and we get the force of friction is negative 0 0.04 Newton. So that's how much force of friction is acting on this salt shaker. The last question is what is the coefficient of friction? And as we should know, the coefficient of friction, force of friction is equal to the mu, the coefficient of friction, times the normal force. Okay. We know what the force of friction is. That's going to be uh, 0 0.04. And I'm just putting the magnitude of that. And mu, uh, which we're looking for, this is the coefficient of friction times normal force. In this case, the normal force and the force of gravity are going to be the same because uh, it's not moving. So that means these two have to cancel out with each other. So this is going to be 0.5 newtons and this is going to be 0.5 newtons. So if normal force is going to be 0.5. And then we can find mu, it's going to be 0 
divided by 0.5 and we get 0.08. Uh, and there are no units for mu, so this is going to be the answer. So this is the coefficient of friction. Okay? So important things to know. So when something is just sliding, there's no force applied pushing it. It's just getting it's some it's just moving that direction. So there's only a force of friction on it. And the acceleration is negative because it's slow, uh, slowing it down, going the other direction. And that coefficient of friction has no units. Alright, so let's do some more friction problems. You apply a horizontal force of 2 newtons to a book with a mass of 0.674 kilograms. The value for the book of coefficient friction, coefficients of friction between the book and the table are the coefficient of static friction is 0.27 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.24. First question is, does the book move? Okay, so let's, there's a few ways to do part A. First of all, let's just draw a free body diagram. We have a force of gravity. We have a force normal. We have a force applied. And then we have a force of friction. So we know that this book moves if the force applied is bigger than the force of friction static. So let's first find what the force of friction static is equal to. Force of friction static is equal to mu static times the normal force. Mu static, as we learned, is 0.27. And the normal force is going to be the same as the force of gravity, again, because these are the only two in the y direction, and it's not moving in the y direction. So this is going to be 6.74 newtons, and it's going to be 6.74 newtons. 6.74 and then we see 6.47 nope 74 newtons times 0.27 and then we see that this is going to be equal to 1.82 newtons so we see the force of friction static is equal to 1.82 that's the maximum value so since it, this person is pushing it with two newtons of force that means it will move does the book move yes Part B is, what is the acceleration of the book? Now that we know the book moves, we're gonna find what the acceleration of this book is. And this is where it becomes a little bit confusing because since it's moving, we're not gonna be using force of friction static anymore. We're gonna be using force of friction kinetic. So force of friction kinetic is for whenever it's moving, it's sliding, uh, we're gonna be using force of friction kinetic. So let's find what this force of friction kinetic is gonna be equal to. Again, it's the mu kinetic coefficient friction kinetic times the normal force. Uh, mu k is 0 0.24, 0 0.24, and the normal force we found was 6.74. 0 0.24 times 6.74, and we get 1.62 newtons. Um, so now, we know that this is gonna be accelerating in the x direction, because in the y direction it's not moving, it's only moving the x direction. So let's find what this acceleration is in the x direction. Sum of all forces in the x equals mass times acceleration x. We have force applied going to the right minus force of friction kinetic is equal to mass times acceleration x. Force applied is equal to 2. Force of friction kinetic is 1.62. Mass is 0.674 and acceleration which we're looking for. So let's put that into our calculator. And we get uh, 0 0.57 meters per second. Okay. All right. Let's look at the next, um, uh, next friction problem. When you push a 1.8 kilogram horiz uh, book horizontally resting on a tabletop, it takes 2.25 newtons to start the book sliding, to start the book sliding, to get the book to slide. Once it is sliding, however, it takes only 1.5 newtons to keep the book moving with constant speed. What is the coefficient of static friction? What is the coefficient of kinetic friction? Okay, so for part A, what we're gonna realize is to get it starting, this thing to start moving, force of gravity, which is going to be equal to 1.8 times 10, 18 newtons, and force normal, which is equal to 18 newtons. So to get this thing to start moving, it requires a force applied of 2.25 newtons. 
okay? And that's why it's harder to start something than if it's already moving, it's kind of easier to keep it moving. So what we realize is the force of friction static is equal to 2.25, that's the maximum value. Okay, so that's the maximum value for force of friction static because before this, if you pushed it with 2.24, it wouldn't move, 2.2.1, it doesn't move. It doesn't move until you exceed 2.25. So we know that force of friction static is equal to 2.25 newtons. We also know that force of friction static is equal to the coefficient of friction of static, that's what we're looking for, times the normal force. So let's put this into play. Force of friction static, which is equal to 2.25, is equal to coefficient of friction, which we're looking for, times the normal force, which is 18. And we find that the coefficient of static force is going to be 2.25 divided by 18, which gives us 0 0.125. Again, there are no units for this. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction? So while it's moving, to keep it moving without it accelerating, you only need 1.5 newtons. So we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. So to keep it moving, we need a force applied of 1.5 newtons. So this is gonna give us what the kinetic friction is. Force of gravity, 18 newtons. Force normal, 18 newtons. So now we know that the force of friction kinetic is going to be equal to 1.5 newtons. We also know force of friction kinetic is equal to coefficient of kinetic friction times normal force. Force of friction kinetic is 1.5. And then the oh, coefficient of friction kinetic, which we're looking for, normal force, which is 18. And we do a little bit of mass, 1.5 divided by 18 and we find the coefficient of kinetic friction is going to be 0 0.083. Okay, and just important to know, so th these two are moving with, it's moving constant velocity, so this is the uh, force of friction kinetic because these two are canceling out, so it's allowing it to move with constant speed. If it's moving with constant speed, that means this and these two are equal. So now I know force of friction kinetic is equal to 1.5. And then I could just use a little bit of algebra to find the coefficient of kinetic friction. Same thing over here, the force of friction static is equal to this because if it exceeds this, it's going to start moving. So these two are going to be equal to each other. Okay, let's do one more with friction and then we should be good. At a local hockey rink, a puck is given initial speed of 5.3 meters per second as it slides down the hockey rink. Draw a free body diagram. If a if the coefficient of kinetic friction between the ice and the puck is 0.11, what displacement does the puck slide before coming to rest? Okay, so first of all, again, this thing is sliding, nothing is pushing it, so that means there is no force applied. It's moving this way, but nothing is pushing it, so we're not gonna be putting a force applied here. We have force of gravity, we have force normal, and then we have a force of friction, and since it's moving, it's gonna be kinetic friction going that way. That's what it should look like. Uh, next question, if the coefficient connect friction between the ice and the puck is 0.11, what, is the, what displacement does the puck slide before coming to rest? So let's write a few things, what we know. Initial speed, so initial velocity is 5.3 meters per second. We know that it's gonna come to a stop. Final velocity is gonna be zero. And I guess that's all we know. We want to find what the displacement is. So this is all we know. So let's see if we can find out some more information. Let's see if we can find the acceleration. So this is a harder problem. So we're gonna, we know it's gonna be accelerating in the x direction because in the y direction it's not moving. So sum of all forces in the x is equal to mass times acceleration x. All we have is this force of friction that's going to the left. So negative force of friction x equals mass times acceleration x. And we know this force of friction is gonna be equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky, so uh, watch how I do this. The coefficient of friction is 0.11, so negative 0.11. And we know the force normal is gonna be the same as the force of gravity, which is mass times gravity 10. So this is gonna be the same. 
So I could put over here math times 10. And this is going to be equal to math times acceleration x. And what you should notice here is mass is on both sides. So what you can do is you can cross out mass. And now you can find what the acceleration is. Acceleration is going to be equal to negative 1.1 meters per second squared. So we can put that right here. Negative 1.1 meters per second squared. And now we can find what this displacement is. We look at a formula sheet and we can see this formula will give us what the displacement is. Vf squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A change in X. 0 is equal to 5.3 squared plus 2 negative 1.1 change in X. Do a little bit of algebra. 5.3 squared. Put that to the other side. Divide by 2. Divide by 1.1. And we get 12.77 meters. Okay. Alright, thanks for watching. We'll be doing a little bit more challenging problems next time.